My trading poker cards were a dream of mine come true. They were created specifically by me to help you learn how to develop and trade correctly in the financial markets. With my cards, you will learn how to enter a trade, how to add to a trade, how to adjust your protective stops in a trade, and more importantly, how specifically you should take profits. Trading will become so simple and so powerful, it will almost become a game for you. You will also be a part of my trading poker club where you will not only interact with me, but with all the members of the club. Also, you will have access to a monthly study session totally free. This session is only available for members of my club. All right, traders. So let's let's begin. First thing I'm going to cover with you is the difference between a bull and bear 180 and what I consider to be a color change, which in a sense is a miniature bull and bear 180. So let's quickly cover what a bull 180 is. This is one of your cards. It is a fairly solid red bar that is immediately followed by an even more powerful and solid green bar that supersedes the high of the red bar. So now the key to this event, guys, is that you know, um, the key to the event is the amount of green in each bar. So you can have sort of like wicks on the either end, but the vast majority of the bar is body. So the vast majority of the green bar is green, not tails. And the vast majority of the red bar is body or red, the color red and not just wicks or anything like that, right? The other thing about the bull 180 is that the two bars should be hefty. So we know that the green bar is bigger and taller and heftier but the red bar is not small the red bar is sizable the red bar is formidable and that's very important to understand this is by far the most powerful event in your deck of cards you will never find something more powerful than the bear, the bull 180 okay so out of all your actionable events this ranks at the top for the most power okay which means that typically moves to the upside from a bull 180 will tend to be more enduring, more powerful, and produce more, statistically speaking. Now, what is the difference between this and the color change? Well, it's this. So we have a much smaller red bar, but it's for its size, it's hefty too. It's just smaller. And then you have a smaller green bar, but it too is hefty. What do I mean by hefty? Meaning that the vast majority of the bar is still body. Okay. So this is what I call a color change, which is, which has significance, but this is a monster color change. That's the bull 180. One is more regular and one is more hefty. Now, really, the quality of these are the quality of either of these is really determined by the red bar, not really the green bar. That's an interesting thing to note. It's the quality of the red before the green. So as an example, take a look at this. This could be considered this kind of bar, but it doesn't matter. It's the red bar that really determines which one of these it is. And because the red is not hefty, then it must be the color change. Does that make sense, guys? If the red is small, if the body is rather small, then it's even if the green is tall, it's still considered a color change. It's not a bull 180. What makes a bull or bear 180 is the first bar. So if we, we take all of this in reverse, right? And we do something like this, right? So we do green bar first, red bar second. Boom. There is your bear 180. And then we do this green bar. And boom, red bar. That's a color change, even though the red bar is hefty, really big and hefty. 
because the bar, the first bar determines which one it is. Bear 180 is here. Color change is here. Make sense, guys? Okay, good. Now, which one is this? One or two? That's right. It's one because the green is tall and he he hefty, not small. Okay. From your bull 180, which one is this? One or two? One being bull 182 being color change. Right. Good. Beautiful. And this is well. Okay. Good. This is well. All of these are color changes. Good, good. So that's the first thing I wanted to clarify for you. Now that we know the difference, because I, the reason why I wanted to clarify this is for you is because I am using that terminology color change a lot now. And some people are saying, but Oliver, that's not really one of the cards or that's not. It's really just a miniature bull and bear 180. I'm just giving it a separate name. Instead of calling it mini bull or bear 180, I'm giving it a separate name, color change. But you know that it's just really a smaller version of a bull or bear 180. Um, guys, your questions, don't, <laughs> some of your questions I just don't understand. Like, so the body needs to fill the candlestick. You have a card that is named bull, bull 180 and bear 180. On the back of that card is a full description of what it is. So is it that you don't understand what the bull and bear 180 is? I'm not quite understanding what you're trying to get at. Fill the candlestick? Oh, you mean does the body need to fill be the whole candlestick? Some people have confusion with the wicks. If a body like this, right, if it has a wick that's too tall, what does that become, guys? What is that called in your deck of cards? That's a topping tail bar, right? Is this a topping tail bar? Is that one a topping tail bar? No, that's just a little wick. So there should be no confusion regarding tails, guys. If the tail gets long enough, it becomes something else, right? If your tail be is big enough, it becomes something else. Jerry, Jerry's asking the typical adult question. Remember, I, I always told you guys, like, you know, kids trade better than adults because they just take things plain and simple as they are. But adults sort of like, uh, what percentage is that, Oliver? What percentage of a tail is this? And is there a ruler that you have that I can measure this? What's far away? Uh, is there a number you can put on far away? Like kids just say, wow, that's far away. That's close. And I tease you guys about it because I want to keep bringing your attention to how there's a tendency for us to overcomplicate something as adults. We can't accept the fact that something is really just black and white, that it is plain, so plain that a 12 year old can understand. So a 12 year old would say, that's a big tail and that's a little tail. And adults will say, but how, what percentage of a little tail versus the big tail makes it a little tail? Is it 10 percent? <laughs> you know, that that's more the adult mindset coming in. So you can see it in Jerry's question. And not to tease you, Jerry, it's just I do want everyone, I want to catch everyone doing this, right? How strong is a color change compared to a bull 180? Is it 80%, 70%, 50%? Guys, color changes are significant. They are viable and sellable events. Bull 180s and bear 180s are buy and sell events, but they are your most powerful buy and sell events. You as a trader should not be choosing trades based on what power they are. You should be choosing them based on what location they are occurring at and you take them all. Let me explain it this way. You as a trader, you have a destiny. Let's say for instance, this guys, if a stock gives you a color change right at, let's say, a flat, powerful 200 period moving average, that is one of your events at a powerful location, 
that is your destiny. You do not say, well, the color change is less powerful than the Bull 180, so I would rather a Bull 180, so I'm not taking that. That is not how you trade. You trade whatever life brings to you in the right location. If life, meaning the market in this case, I've always told you that the market is a microcosmic version of life. If life or the market delivers in your lap a bull 180 that is in a good location, that is your destiny. You don't think, you don't question, you don't call up the psychic hotline, you don't check, double check with your mother, you just take the trade. That's how you're supposed to build your experience. Does that make sense, guys? That's the way you're supposed to do it. Because how else are you ever going to conquer the problem of hesitation or doubt if you don't start practicing trading that way? How are you gonna eliminate the questions or the hesitations or being a fearful trader if you don't take the destiny route to trading, right? So the destiny route is if I get one of the events, you have seven cards. If I get one of these things that happen at a good location, that is life telling me to dive in. Now, let me get through this. Let me get through this, guys, because um, I'm just laying the groundwork for our lesson here. So remember, I told you that I wanted to bring a concept that is not necessarily a specific card in your deck, but a concept that will make the cards in your deck more powerful. And this is somewhat of a location concept. It's actually a hybrid between an event concept and a location concept. So I'm going to cover it like this. Let's say, for instance, you have a rising 20 period moving average. Now, the 20 period moving average is a location item, all right? The 20 MA is a location item. The 200 period moving average is a location item. Always remember this. These are location items. The reason why you need to understand this is because many people confuse these as an event item it is not these are not a events they are not event items they are location items let me give you an example i see a trader take a trade and i say and it's to me it's not a trade and they but they took the they took a buy trade and i'm like why did this trader take a buy trade and when i ask them they say but it was at or near the 20 period moving average. And I'm like, well, is the 20 period moving average an event or is it a location? I'm like, there was no event at the 20. You don't just buy. So the trader would do this. The trader's buying a falling knife right there. There's no, this is not an event, but the trader blindly buys there, confusing the 20 period moving average as the event itself versus the location at which you need to see an event. Do you guys follow the difference between location and event? You just don't buy something because it's near the 20. You need an event at or near the 20, okay? But this can just keep searing through, okay? All right, so, that's the difference between a location item and an event item. Okay, now, now that we know that these two things are event item, I mean, are location items, let me cover the concept that I want to cover with you. Here's your stock. Your stock is under the, tw the 20, gets above the 20, pierces through the 20 gains some space guys this is important gains some space doesn't have to be a lot of space but gain some space what do i mean by space there is space now 
between your stock. There's white on this chart between your stock and your 20. There's space between it. It's not this. Look, it's not this. There's barely any height. So we want some degree of height above the 20. All right. We start off under the 20. We get above the 20 and we achieve some height. We pull back toward the 20 and boom, right there is your, is one of your events. Maybe it's a color change, a bull 180, a bottoming tail bar, a red bar takeout. All right. Guys, usually if there's a sound issue, not all the time, usually it is on your end most of the time. So this is called, guys, the 20 MA halt. Halt. Who goes there? It's like the 20 period moving average is halting the pullback. It was under the 20. Now the 20 wakes up from its slumber and says, wait, 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 where are you going? And stops it dead in its tracks. Now we're looking whenever a stock comes from under the 20, sears through the 20, gains some height, not a lot, but just some, pulls back, halts with an event that is a very powerful buy so let's take a look at we're, what we're looking at now is the u.s dollar index and it's a weekly chart the time frame doesn't matter doesn't time doesn't matter i'm just seeing it right now so here is the the blue line is the 20 here's your here's the dollar index it's under the 20. we get above the 20 there is some space here okay so we gain some height doesn't have to be a lot we pull back now this could keep going look at how it kept going here we're under the 20 we get above the 20 we pull back and keep going okay but it was actually a, a, a slight little hiccup where it tried to try to to actually hit there but here boom pull back Here's the event, and we're off. Now, the reason why this halt is usually so powerful is because it's your first successful retest. It's your first sign that the 20 period moving average, which was sleeping, is now not sleeping. So normally, your 20 period moving average will be kind of flattish at first. That's why your stock is under it. And then your 20, your stock, so your 20 is flattish, which means that like when you lie down, you're flat in your bed. When the stock does this, it actually wakes the 20 up by pulling it higher. It's actually the move up that pulls the 20 with it, right? And then as this is falling, your 20 is rising. And this is the first sign that your 20 is no longer slum in slumber. Your 20 is no longer sleep. Your 20 has woken up to start doing its job. And you're catching the beginning of what could be an enduring new trend. Now, let's take the 200. Let's take, for instance, something like this. You, so we saw the, the 20 MA halt. Let's do the 200 halt. You're under the 200. Boom. You get above the 200. There's some height. We pull back. Boom. An event happens right there. That's the 200 MA halt. So what I'm teaching you is in a kind of an event location concept where if you combine one of your events with this starting from below to now above and halt wow take a look at this guys we get above the 200 we get some height we pull back and we get boom 
the color change. Now, some people might be confused here. I am using the color change as the body, the body flip, not the wick flip. Okay. So I tend to more often than not use the body as the flip. Okay. Color change on the halt. Now, what makes this one so special? This is extra special, but why? It's a 200 MA halt, but it's also the 20 period moving average retest at the same time in the same location. Wow. So guys, you see how you can start stacking odds in your favor by how much lines up at the same point, right? Without the 20 being there, that's awesome. With the 20 there, it's more awesome. This is also what some of you are referring to here. This is also the situation where your, your stock is trapped between an overhead flat 200 and a rising 20. And I've taught you in the past that usually in that scenario, it's the rising moving average that wins. So the 20 often wins by pushing it above. If you get that successful retest plus an event, boom. Now, remember, don't be like the traders that just buy falling knives into these. This one worked, but you need an event. You need a color change. You need a bottom and tail bar. You need a bull 180. You need a red bar takeout. This is a red bar takeout, by the way. It's just a delayed color change, right? That's all a red bar takeout is. It's just delayed. It didn't happen this bar. It happened some subsequent bar later. And there is your, that's your concept. Now, it would be great if I could find a reverse scenario for this. Now, someone was saying, Oliver, did Apple do this on Friday? Let's take a look. I'm, I'm not sure or, or don't remember. Let me go to two minute chart here. And let's see. I don't see it. I don't really see it here, but I do sort of see it. I see it here. Like, take a look at this. See, we're up below the, t the 20. Let's open this up a little bit and let's move it. So here you are below, you get above, you gain some distance, see the distance, you gain some height, you pull back and boom, a bottoming tail bar forms. Boom, a bottoming tail bar forms. So there's your halt and you kind of have it here. You're under, you get above, you pull back, and your bottoming tail bar. Now, this is an interesting one because this brings out a nuance that I'm very glad it's bringing out. Remember, the, the moving averages are more like zones or fences that you can lean on. They're not really skinny lines. So this is sort of pressing up against the fence, right? But not necessarily breaking. So here's how you judge whether or not it's bending or breaking. This is bending, but not breaking. Let me tell you what, how. It's simple. If your trigger entry point is above the item, it's bending it. So where do you buy above the, this tail bar? Right there. If your entry is above the item, it's bending the item like boxing ropes. A boxer can bend the ropes without breaking the ropes. Does that make sense? That's where you were talking about, Matthew? Oh, awesome. Okay. So this didn't break the 20, this bended the 20, like the 20 was boxing ropes that bent and then swung the boxer back, right? Okay. And you judge it by, is your, if your entry is under the 20, it broke it. If it's above the 20, it didn't break it. And so that's how you judge that. So. You see, some people say, but Oliver, this broke the 20. No, it didn't break the 20. That's just bending the 20. Your entry above this tail is there. Your entry above that tail is there. Boom. All right. This is very, very powerful because this will give you, right? This concept will give you the ability to capture 
trend changes like a professional. So oftentimes your stock is doing this, right? And your 20 is doing this. And then, you know, you're, you're, it, you'll, you'll, you'll get something like this. And you're, boom. Now, some people buy that first one. Mistake. You see that? That first one is a mistake. It's rarely the first break. Do you understand? You have to see, you have to see, well, is the next pullback successful? Uh-oh, let's see. Boom! Right there. Now that event happens, a color change or something. And now, right there, you have caught the potential trend change. You've caught the beginning of something that could be enduring, that could be monstrous. Garnett says, I was making this mistake earlier in the week. Yes, the first one is rarely the one, guys. But the successful pullback after the first one. Yes, you can. I've called it a VBS uh, uh, April, of course. Just a color change at the right location, right? A pullback. Beautiful though, beautiful. Let's do the reverse of this. Here's your 20. Boom, a lot of people will try to short that. Wrong, it's rarely the first crack. It's the retest. Wait a minute, let's see. Uh-oh. Here's the 20 MA halt on the reverse side. Boom! Event right there. Now that's your potential short. So with this halt, crack the moving average, pull back toward the moving average, Halt at or near the moving average with one of your events. Boom! Let's do it again. Move, move, move. Crack the 20. Gain height or some small distance. Move back toward the 20. Halt at or near the 20 with an event. Boom! Do you guys got this? Let's see if we can find a few more. This is very powerful, guys. This is very powerful. Well, let's just do let's just do a couple things I like to trade here. My trading poker cards were a dream of mine come true. They were created specifically by me to help you learn how to develop and trade correctly in the financial markets. With my cards, you will learn how to enter a trade, how to add to a trade, how to adjust your protective stops in a trade, and more importantly, how specifically you should take profits. Trading will become so simple and so powerful, it will almost become a game for you. You will also be a part of my trading poker club where you will not only interact with me, but with all the members of the club. Also, you will have access to a monthly study session totally free. This session is only available for members of my club. Okay, what event is this, guys? Color change or bear 180? Did it work? Yeah, it worked. Okay. Was the location good? Yes. That's it. You see how simple that was? What's this? <laughs> Only works in the past. Bear 180 color change. I don't really even care what you call it, guys. Because they're both events. They're both. You have to dive into both, right? Is the location good? Yeah, Costa. Yes. What is this? What is that bar called? Elephant bar. Okay. Clearing as well. That's right. Is it at a good location? Good, good, good. You guys are getting this. This is an exhaustion elephant bar. This, what Fabio was called, saying in an exhaustion bar, this is an igniting bar. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? This is an igniting elephant bar. This is an exhaustion elephant bar. What's the difference? Do you see the difference? 
One is igniting, starting a brand new move. One is ending a move that is already in place. See, this is changing the direction. This direction was up. This changes the up. This direction was down. This exhausts the same direction, extends the same direction. One easy way of knowing this is the, is the beginning of your elephant bar near the 20. Look at the beginning of this one and look at the beginning of this one. This one is near the 20. This one's far away from the 20. Exhaustion, igniting. All right. Exhaustions end. That's right. Ignitings begin. Okay. Most of the time. Nothing is 100% of the time. We, we know this. All right. My general take is I like to, to make it clear the beginning to the 20, that's exhaustion, also is the same color before it. You see, there's no series of red before this bar, but there's a series of red before this one. Does that make sense? If you don't have a series of red before it, it's igniting. If you have a series of red before it, it's exhaustion. Simple. Okay. Will every halt work? Will every 20 MA or 200 period moving average halt work? No. Okay, good. I can explain something so powerfully that people think, well, it should work 100% of the time. No, it's probability, right? It's just playing the odds. If we can get seven to eight wins out of every 10 times we do it, it's worthy to be in our arsenal. All right. What's another one I like to trade here? I like to trade Baba sometimes here. So here's the 20 MA halt on the opposite side, guys. So you have here, like, look, you drop, we break through the 20 and we pull back and boom, we pull back and boom. Do you guys see that? I can open it up a little bit. So we get that, we come from above, we break through, and then we halt. Bam, bam. It's, you know, I want you to try to practice finding these things as well. Look, we come from above, we crack, halt, boom. Boom. Now look at where your entries are. Your entries are under. Your entries are under. These are not breaks. Okay. Boom. Do you see these? Bull 180, but the only thing about this one, this was a little tricky because you didn't really gain height. I, the best ones gain height, guys. Gain some height. There was no height here, but it still worked. Why? Because the bull 180 is your most powerful event. <laughs> Abdul, what do you mean you have to find odds? If you play my events in good locations, you don't have to worry about odds. You do track what you're doing 20 trades by 20 trades. Remember that. You have to evaluate how you're doing after each 20 trades. So, for instance, what is this, guys? I know you know. Just a few of you let me know. I just like to see it on the screen. What's that? Abdul, do you know what that is? That's one of your cards, right? Do you know what that is? That's a bear 180, right? So now, how do you know that's a takeable bear 180? You have to ask yourself, is it in a good location? Are you at a location? And if you are, list the location. Yes. The 20 MA is a location. So if you have a card that is a short bear 180, and that short is at a location, 200, 
Can you take this? Should you take this? Yes. Do you know why? It is your destiny. This is the way you should trade, guys. It'll stop you from being tied up in knots. It'll stop you from being hesitant. It'll stop you from being a scaredy cat as a trader. If I've got one of my cards and it's at a sound location, it's mine. I have to take it. And even if you lose on it, it's still worthy. It's still valuable because that's one extra trade in your bank of experience. And I've always explained to you that your success is on the other side of experience. It's not before experience. Everybody wants to try to get success before experience, but how can real success happen before experience? That's luck. That's not real. Success only happens. Real success, lasting success only happens after cumulative experience and not just any experience, the right experience. There is a possibility of building a bank of incorrect experience. Take a child as an example. You can have a child live in a very bad crime infested neighborhood that every time this child walks out of his home, he sees something bad. This kid is building up experiences in his life that will increase the odds that he becomes the same way. The point is, is that if you have obviously the opposite scenario, the odds of the child doing the opposite is better because that's all the child sees. The same in the market. If, you, if every trade you do is stupid and sloppy and doesn't have a good location, it's not even an event, you're building up a gambler's ex bank of experience. And that will only lead to you always giving your money to the house, your gambler. They don't build multi-billion dollar casinos because they lose. The way you stop, the way you build proper experience is one of your seven cards, it's one of your seven actionable cards, the four main ones being elephants, tails, 180s, RBIs, and GBIs, and bull and bear 180s. Those events lined up at or near good locations, your odds are going to be relatively high. And even if you lose on them, they still count as sound experience. They still get you one step closer to the ultimate goal of trading mastery. So let, let's look at this. This is, an, is a clearing elephant bar. Now, you've identified the event. Is it in a decent location? Yes, it's at or near the 20. You always look at the origin, right? You always look at the origin of the event. Is it at or near? It's, now, here is an elephant bar. Is that in a good location? No, look at the origin of the bar. It's not near. Okay. Here is a miniature bear 180. See that bear 180 right there? You've identified the event. Is that at a good location? Look at the origin of the event. Yes. Here is a green bar takeout where the takeout of this green bar doesn't happen the next bar, but it happens subsequently. Or you can look at this as a plain elephant bar. Look at the origin of the elephant bar. Is that bear elephant bar at a good location? Yes. Okay. This is at a good location. It's not that hard, guys. Bull 180, is this at a good location? Red bar takeout here. Boom. Is that at a good location? RBI, RBI. Boom. Is that at a good location? Yes. The location here is right next to an igniting bar. I mean, guys, the right, if you apply just even a small amount of time to these things, just like we're doing now. Man, your, your opportunity spotting skills, they will explode through the roof. The first sign that you're developing 
is your ability to find these events in the right location, but you do them in the past. You only see them in the past. And this confuses some people because they're like, but I only see them in the past. It confused one trader that we constantly joke about here, where I think it was in the VIP trading club, where this trader says, Oliver's tactics and strategies only work in the past. They don't work in the present. Dude, the past was a former present. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oliver's, Oliver's events only work in the past. Wow. But that's because in the first form of your development, you only see them in the past. If you keep do, if you keep applying yourself, what happens is that the space between the present and the past gets smaller. You start seeing them sooner and sooner until ultimately you start seeing them form live in your face. But it first starts from the past. It starts just like this. We're, the market's not open now. This happened in the past, right? This happened in the past. 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 But it's, it's good to be able to first see them in the past. That's how you practice. I got to practice spotting this one. You take one and you just practice going in the past and finding it in a good location. This will train your eye to see it faster and faster and faster until you're able to see it forming live. <laughs> All right. BTC to 13,800. Not a zero probability, but a low probability. All right. Sheen S. Oliver, in the 20 MA halt scenario, how does the position of the 200 relative to the 20 affect the entry decision? For example, would you say it's in the trap zone, so not a good entry? Um, good question. This is a really good question. Oftentimes, this will be in the trap zones, uh, Shines, because you're under usually the 20, right? Which typically means your stock is trending downward, but it's that first sign of being able to break through. Now, when it breaks through, you're in the trap zone, right? Pulls back the 20 halts. And what I'm saying is that that's the first sign that you could start a complete trend change. And yes, you may very well be in the trap zone. But that's okay, especially if it's a wide trap zone. And let's see if I can find one here. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, the only one I want you to be skeptical of in a trap zone is if the 200 is really close to your buy point. But if the 20 is separate rated from your buy, then I would still take it in the trap zone. But it is often a trap zone scenario. All right. Remember, trap zones, for the most part, should be avoided except in certain scenarios. And this is one of the scenarios. Kel, zero could happen. We're just talking about probability. All right. Trey, Trey says, Oliver, can you by chance show the likely place for the 20 MA halt to happen in a market cycle? All right, cool. Yeah, I, I thought I did that, but that's okay. Let's do it here. Remember, I was showing you downtrend, 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 right? This is what I was showing you with the 20 like that. And then that first breakthrough, the 20 goes flat. This is usually where you'll see it. Your stock pulls back and halts like that. So in the full market cycle, this is a full market cycle. Where is that? Right there, right? Make sense, Trey? When will you see a lot of this? In the after a morning, let me let me let me get this chart out of the way here. For instance, you'll see a lot of this, right? After like if you look at this, you'll see this is the full market cycle, right? So look at your full cycles. That's one. Here's another. But sometimes they're wider, right? The cycles can be shorter, wider. It depends. So 
when you're when you're dealing with this, like look at where your cycle change is happening, your trend change is happening. So you drop and the 20 starts halting right to the other side, which means that you have started this side of the cycle. Yes. And now we're what part of the cycle are you in? You see, you see, sometimes the bottom of the cycle and the top are, are, are sharp. So you get this. Sometimes they're flat like that. Sometimes they're sharp. This one's flat. This one's sharp. This is the up cycle. This is the down. This is the up sharp. This is the down sharp. This is the up sharp. This is the down flat. There's only one cycle. I've taught you that over and over again. Uh, do I ever use GAN angle method? Uh, Matthew, how long have you been with me? In any capacity, Matthew. One year? Have you ever in an entire year heard me mention GAN anything? There you go. <laughs> Guys, I, I, I will tell you this. I give you everything that I use and know. Everything. I don't hide anything. I don't hold anything back. No. I give you everything. I give you 41, almost 42 years of total trading, 36 going on 37 years of professional trading. I split those two numbers up, guys, because the, the learning years, I don't, the, with learning years, it's almost 42 years. Well, not almost. I mean, next year, March of next year will make 42 years. But December will make 37 years of professional trading where this is after I got it and I, my, my first professional activity in the market. All of that experience I give you, but it's very important to understand this. You can't trade someone else's experience. I give you my experience, but you can't trade my experience. So then what do you do with it? You have to make that experience, your experience. It has to stop being my experience. You see, in my experience, when you get a solid red bar takeout near the 200, it's a buy. Look at this. Red bar, takeout, near the 20. That's my experience. I have given you that. It is my experience that when a bottoming tail bar gets taken out near the 200, it is a buy. That is my experience. It is my experience that a color change near a 200 is a buy. That is my experience. But you can't trade my experience. You can only understand my experience. So my experience becomes knowledge for you, but knowledge is not enough. I'm going to repeat that. My experience shared with you becomes knowledge. It does not become experience for you. It becomes knowledge for you. But so many people believe that knowledge or think that knowledge is enough. That is why they float from seminar to seminar, mentor to mentor, book to book, course to course, training to training, because they think it's about knowing. How many people know they should work out but don't? How many people know they should eat better but they don't? Do you understand? Knowing is not enough. You have to turn knowing or knowledge into experiential knowledge. How do you turn the experience, my experience, which becomes your knowledge. Now, how do you take that knowledge to make it your experiential knowledge? You have to use it. You have to find it over and over again. Look at it, study it, trade it. You have to bring your experience to that knowledge. And in so doing, over time, it stops, becomes less Oliver's and more mine. Less Oliver's and more mine. Less Oliver's and more mine until it's all mine. 
I used to have this little joke where somebody would say something really brilliant. And I was like, oh my God, I like that. Said, I'm going to use that. And when I use that, I'm going to give you credit for it. The second time I use it, I'm going to forget who you are. So I can't remember who said this, but, and then the third time it's mine. <laughs> That's what happens through use. The knowledge becomes yours. And so every session we have between the sessions, what should you be doing? Turning the concept that is mine into yours through use. This 20 MA Hawk concept, you know what you should do? You should create a file or a folder on your desktop. You should label it halt halts because it's 20 MA halts and 200 MA halts or create two folders, 20 MA halt folder, 200 MA halt folder. Now you all know how to capture an image on your screen, right? It's usually built right into windows or Mac, right? The image capturing device or software, whatever. So now when you find one of these, you take an image and drop it in the folder. 20 MA halt, boom, image, drop it in the 20 MA halt folder. Oh, wow, here's a beautiful 200 MA halt, boom, take an image, drop it in the 200 MA. And you should collect these like you're a freaking art collector. You know how they say a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, in our business, a picture is worth thousand dollars. Every one of those is worth a thousand dollars that you that you think of it like that. What if every image you put in a folder is worth a thousand dollars in your life? It's probably worth more, but if you thought of it that way, you would go out into the world, the market and find your thousands of dollars. That's how you make it yours. Then when you get a, a nice full folder, flip through them every now and then, because what this will do, look at, look at the 20, look at the 119 images you have in the 20 MA halt folder. Sit down with a glass of wine one Sunday afternoon, throw some relaxing music on in the background and flip through the 119 images in that folder. I promise you, your ability to spot these things in the instant is only going to increase if you do that. Take the trades, create a journal of 20 MA halt trades that you took, get to 20 of them and evaluate. Do I have more money? from the 20 MA halt play on the 20th time than I had on the first time. And if you don't, let's look deeper. Why? This is the work traders that almost no one wants to do. This is how you turn the training that we do into something living and breathing and impactful for you. It just doesn't come by closing this session, going about your normal life until the next session. Now, guess what? It's time to go to work. You got it? Go to work, my friends. Go to work, traders. Do it. I love you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We're back at this game on Monday morning, tomorrow morning. Be safe. Take care of each other. Ciao for now. Boo! My trading poker cards were a dream of mine come true. They were created specifically by me to help you learn how to develop and trade correctly in the financial markets. With my cards, you will learn how to enter a trade, how to add to a trade, how to adjust your protective stops in a trade, and more importantly, how specifically you should take profits. Trading will become so simple and so powerful, it will almost become a game for you. You will also be a part of my trading poker club where you will not only interact with me, but with all the members of the club. Also, you will have access to a monthly study session totally free. This session is only available for members of my club.